Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So this week I'm gonna show you what I have been working on for a really long time. This is one of those projects that um, just, I have roadblock after roadblock after roadblock and nothing seemed to work and when I thought it was finally ready, an issue happened and, <laughs> but the main thing here is that I got it done. It is done now, I don't have to do it anymore and I overcame all those obstacles. So I feel like that's a pivotal point of DIYing is that things are always gonna go wrong and you just have to stick to it. So hopefully this will encourage you to keep pressing on even when it appears like it's not going to work out. So anyway, I will show you how I turned an old dresser that I got for $20 off of Let Go into our new coffee bar. So this is what the dresser looked like in the beginning. As I said, I got it for about $20 off of Let Go and you can tell it's kind of a little rough. This was after I cleaned it. Uh, when I first got it, it was covered in fingerprints and little bits of food and I don't know what else. Uh, it was in a little kid's room, so you can only imagine. Now before I started anything, I did a lead paint test because I had no idea how old this dresser was, so I just wanted to be safe. And no lead. Next, I had to remove the hardware, and these knobs were really strange. I have never ran into anything like this, but they weren't screw-in knobs. They were actually hammered in, so the only way to remove them was to hammer them out. Then I started sanding everything down because I originally intended to paint this all with a latex-based paint. So much sawdust. You would think I would have learned my lesson about sanding inside, but you know, <laughs> it takes me a few times. Next, I went ahead and filled in the center hole of this drawer. Originally, I had some hardware that I was planning on using and I only had four of them, not six of them. So I filled in the center hole. The hilarious part about this is that I ended up not using that hardware because it was gigantic on the drawer. So in addition to filling in the center hole, I also wanted to use different knobs, if you will, for the bottom four drawers, and they were kind of roped, and they wouldn't have fit in the current holes. So what I didn't show is that I also drilled two new holes in the bottom four drawers that were nine inches apart, and I filled in the original two holes there. Now after sanding down the wood filler, I went ahead and started painting it. Now I didn't show you what paint I'm using, but it's just the basic Valspar latex paint. I painted the first coat. That is when disaster struck for the first time. After the first coat dried, I noticed that where I had done the wood filler to fill in the holes, I had not apparently sanded it down enough. So it was completely lumpy over every part that I had filled in. But I wasn't gonna be deterred by this. I went ahead and I sanded it down as flat as I could and repainted the drawers. <laughs> But afterwards, unfortunately, you could still see where I had patched it in. As I was looking at it for a little while, I noticed that I really didn't care for the color as much as I originally had. It was a bit bright and in your face for my taste. I really like more of a neutral color palette with soft 
pops of color. So after that, I decided that I was just going to paint it white because white goes with everything. And if I really wanted to change it later on, I could. And this is where disaster struck again. I kind of ran into an issue with the dresser. Um, I had it done except for we had a little mishap with a hot cup that was left on the surface and I was just going to sand it down and kind of touch it up. But the problem is, is that um, <laughs> I went to like wipe it down to clean it off so it was a nice clean surface to put another coat on and it started peeling everything off in one sheet with a wet rag. So it obviously did not bond well and I've just started stripping it and I'm just going to strip it all off which is going to take forever and then I'm just going to use chalk paint because I'm apparently not supposed to use regular paint. <laughs> I'm not going to time lapse that because that would be ridiculous and it's a very labor intensive process of just you know rubbing off all the paint. So here's an in progress shot. All I'm doing is just taking some warm water and soaking it or not soaking it but just running it over it and then it just peels off and I'm using a scraper just to speed up the peel off price process prices <laughs> process um but yeah that's what I'm doing I still have the whole front to go Oy. let me tell you how much I enjoyed doing this it was amazing I loved it so much I would do it again not Use a primer if you're going to use regular paint. I thought by sanding it, I could get away with not having a primer, but you know what? I am completely a noob because yeah, you need a primer. But at this point, yeah, don't make the same mistake. <laughs> so after scraping off the paint and getting a little bit of carpal tunnel in both hands that I'm still recovering from, I went ahead and bought white chalk paint and painted it. Didn't film it because I was kind of fed up with the process and thinking that I wasn't even gonna show you guys this. But you know, you must gain something from my failures, so. <laughs> so I used my trusty Rust-Oleum chalked paint in linen white and I painted the whole thing. So after the two coats of chalk paint dried, I went ahead and added the jewelry that is at the knobs. <laughs> Now this beautiful piece I chose because it was a dollar and I like cheap. The texture is not exactly my style, but you can't really tell unless you're right on it. But they just screw in and you can see they work. I got these poles from Hobby Lobby. They were originally a gold finish and I went ahead and spray painted them with a black spray paint. And here is what it looked like when it was all finished. I really hope that watching this kind of helped you not make the mistakes that I did, I suppose. I hope that it inspires you to try a project of your own and continue on even if it doesn't work out the first time, the second time, the 80th time. But overall, I'm really happy with it came out. It's a little more streaky than I would have wanted it, but you can't tell. Only I can tell. Nobody's gonna be like, 
this close to it and looking at all of the streaks. So I just need to let go of my need for perfection and embrace it because it does look good. It's, it's useful and it's kind of my favorite spot in the house right now. I'm slowly converting my house to what I would really like it to be. Um, but you know, as I DIY everything, it takes time. So it's not like I have an Instagram worthy house right now, but hopefully one day I will. But yeah, I hope you guys all have amazing weeks and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.